Bro. Okay. We're going to go to the phones Let's and see if that. we can okay. uh, let uh, Vivica screw up some young sure. listeners. Dennis, <laughs> you're 27. That's right. What's going on? Well, okay, I'm, I'm disabled and I use uh, online a lot to meet uh, women, girls. And I met this girl, which I've been talking to for a while. What? what why are you disabled? Why am I disabled? What's, What's your disability? Right. <laughs> Uh, my disability is called spinal muscular atrophy. It's basically a genetic... Kugelberg, Kugel, Kugelberg Wielander syndrome. No, are you in right? a chair? Yeah, it's basically just a genetic disability which is uh, similar to muscular dystrophy, but it's not muscular dystrophy. But it, it's Kugelberg Wielander syndrome, right? Excuse me? Kugelberg Wielander syndrome. That's the other name for it. Okay. Oh, I thought you were making a joke, oh, but no, you're that's, not. That's right. the you're name. the doctor. That's the name of that. Right. Okay. And, okay. And here's the deal with spinal muscular atrophy is it gets very slowly worse and there's various different intensities of severity. Uh, well, yeah, it depends on the level, you know, which level you have. Yeah, and interestingly, the, some of the patients that I've dealt with that have spinal muscular atrophy claim they get smarter as they get older. Like well, their I'm intellect seems to expand right. as they get older. It's a very interesting sort of observation. Though. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because they're not wasting a bunch of time kicking around a soccer ball and screwing. Not yeah. just that, they're just not wasting that, you know, that energy... On the they, limbs. One of them said it's just because he has to deal with that the damn illness, compensating, you know, creating all the necessary structure in their life. Oh, right. yeah, you have insight on different things. Okay. But well, the good news is, so uh, Dennis gets yeah. to uh, cruise chicks via the internet. Yeah. Well, sometimes. All right. What's going on, Dennis? Okay. Well, I met this girl, and you know, I think it's kind of unique. She has certain problems which I find unique, uh, interesting. But we've we've talked on the phone, and but she's a recluse kind that doesn't like to meet people. And she thinks it's kind of weird to meet somebody that's in there online. Well, she always listens to Loveline. I was made a joke with her that I'm going to call up Loveline. I'm going to tell them this, you know. And she goes, well, I don't know. She goes, you know, if you talk to Dr. Drew and Dr. Drew says that I should meet you, maybe I'll consider it. All right, here's what I... It, You're it, the matchmaker It's very interesting point, that I have this call tonight. I was just... I met with a friend of mine tonight, and we were trying to figure out ways to take chat rooms and turn them into real meetings. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, well, well yeah, that's what parks are for. <laughs> but no, because you know what? They have to be, it has to be really structured. You know, there has to be like a, you need like a questionnaire right. and advice sheets and how to manage the situation, bring a friend, it could where be, to meet. It, it ugly, could be weird. It yeah. could be really bad. And so I, I'm going to, I, and by the way, I've mentioned this website I'm building, this Dr.com. People have sent fantastic uh, feedback and we appreciate the input. Well, what's it called? drdrew.com. All right, that's well, it. go ahead and get I, that I, out. I, I, don't want, I, don't, I feel like I've been well, doing too much. Well, then don't bring it up. Well, I just want to say thank you for it's it, and that I'm working on stuff like this, try to figure out ways to make make these things more experientially healthy, because I think Internet relationships are terribly unhealthy. Why don't you peddle our book on that damn website? All right, I will. Thank All right. you. All right. All right, so, Dennis, does she know about your disability? When about that, I mean, you don't hide something like that if you want to meet somebody. She knows about it. Yeah, yeah, she knows about it. Okay. Uh, did, did, uh, did does she, she have a problem with it, or do, does she have a problem with it? Right. Uh, no, I think just basically she she doesn't like to meet people. It's not very outgoing for various reasons, which I don't want to go into. Here's but, my my basic guidelines for this whole thing. You go ahead. And, you go ahead. First of all, Dennis sounds like a great guy. Yeah. And, and she should be reasonably safe meeting him. But m I have just sort of two basic rules I think ought to be applied. One is. The woman's in charge of the how the thing goes down, and that each of you bring a friend. And some pepper spray. And some pepper spray for women. Okay. All right. Well, how, how much uh, damage is Dennis going to do? Is well, you do it in a public place, too. Yeah. You don't, like, say, why don't yeah. you meet me behind the oh, back? Dennis, house, hold on. Yeah. Dennis, are you in a wheelchair? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, we're just shouldn't come to your pad. pad. No, we're giving... Oh, my brother's in a wheelchair, and he's dangerous. What's in the wheelchair? Really? He got in a back car injury. accident. Yeah. yeah. He won, took sixth place in the LA Marathon. He's an elite wheelchair racer, and I tell oh, you. Oh, those guys are insane. Those are guys are studs, man. They, but there's something wrong with those guys. What's wrong there? with them? Most they go right. nuts with that wheelchair. They, well, I know anyone would push and push and push. and push. He's apparently going to go do something where he does two marathons a day for 11 days in Alaska. I don't know what they're thinking, but the chicks dig him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and they have to, too. First off, this guy's got big arms. Huge. And chicks love those big arms. Secondly, if, if they're all good-looking guys yeah, from, the, from the waist up because all they do is work out and get tan because they just push themselves all around the Southland. And then the thing about chicks is they like them because they're kind of like hunky guys, but they're not dangerous right. because they're confined to a wheelchair. It's and like if can, Fabio, who's been hobbled. Yeah, and they can ride around on, on their lap all the time. They get all the good parking places. They Yeah, they have no problem parking. Yeah, and, and you know what else, too, is I, I think women 
they're they're nicer than than guys are, and they w don't want to admit that they're shallow and wouldn't date a guy who has a disability. So they compensate. Yeah, it's good. It's it's like yeah, and actually the ones who get confronted with it quickly disappear quickly. So it's a nice yeah. screening process. So he's got a hot girlfriend. He's got hot girlfriends. Really? Plural. I don't like that. I don't like people with disabilities getting more poontang than me. It's <laughs> not right. Look at me. I'm fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Go home and masturbate every night. That's horrible. That's important. Don't ever introduce me to your brother. Nick. Hey. You're 18. Yeah, I am. What's going on? I just want to let you guys know that I think you guys are doing a really great job. You're really performing a service. Thanks. I've learned a lot about how, you know, people form patterns in their relationships and things. And I, you know, I don't think you guys get enough props for that. No, yeah, we don't. We but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Moss was just complaining ahead. about that and today. For Vivica, I saw he got game in the in the ghetto hood, and it really was a different experience. In it? Yeah, everything I was thinking, people were just saying. Yeah, they they don't they don't uh, edit. They thought they were thinking it too. Was the <laughs> interesting part? Well, that's what actually the thing I love about Ed TV is it is an interactive movie where the whole movie is based on people's comments so it sort of gives license to the audience a normal audience it's right. not just an inner city audience or a you know, oh, culturally oh, I... expressive audience yeah, that's a that's a good way to put it isn't that politically correct yeah <laughs> nick yeah uh, what's going on with you oh no i just kind of want to let you guys know that and i also kind of want to ask if you guys can do fantasy answer more fantasy answer oh, yeah. oh drew's fantasy answers yeah, that's pretty good stuff i yeah. can help with that and, well, uh, <laughs> Tell that people at MTV that the loudmouth part in your guys' show sucks. Yeah. Jeez. I, yeah, Adam did tell them that a few times. Oh. Uh, well, let them know that the audience hates it, too. Well, listen. Uh -huh. um, the loudmouth part, which is uh, the part where somebody out in the audience comes up to join us on stage and sort of uh, say nothing for the last 15 minutes of the show, uh, I got so tired of it, I just stopped doing it. Yeah, you just wouldn't call the person up. For, they, go, they go, Adam, there's your loudmouth sitting in that chair over there. Call him up after the first call. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do it. That's what you're doing. You want to know what a prick I am? I'd be, we'd be doing the show, and they'd be holding a big sign up, "Call Loudmouth up the stage," and I'd go, "Drew, who's on the phone?" And we'd go, we just keep doing the show, and then we'd go to commercial, and they'd go, "Would you call up the Loudmouth?" I go, "Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see the sign." And we'd just keep doing the show, and I'd, I just wouldn't do it. That's what they call emotionally deaf. Yeah, it's good. It's good you to be that way. Don't hear things you don't want to hear. No, you he heard it. Oh, yeah, but he didn't want to, and so he just... Oh, no, I, I heard it. I saw it. It was F.U. I'm not doing it. So it's a horrible idea. That's just out and out. F.U. This yeah. is F.U. F.U., baby. And then, then, then if they get on his case, he starts yelling into the mic, F.U. Oh, yeah, I do yell F.U. into my mic. Well, That's I'm great. glad you have this outlet. Well... It's a healthy thing. I mean, listen, oh, I, I'm you only... Them a commercial. Uh, I'm only going <laughs> to let what, screw what, things what up so badly. What is the most common noun you use to call our producers? Uh, the term you, the noun you use to describe them. Listen, you... Jeez, uh, there's so many. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to think. Um, when they wouldn't, then they insist on doing things. Oh, pussies? Like that's the one. Oh, yeah. oh, love that. So you can say pussy on the air. I well, guess I we can. Share, but Not on the TV. That's just during the commercial when I oh, call them pussies. But you could say it like now. I could say... I guess so. Yeah, like, We're not sure. Are you pussy whipped? That's what I want to know. It's, a, it's good. Yeah, if you put it in a sentence, it's fine. Lily. Lily? Yes. Yeah. You're 28. Sorry, I thought you said really. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. Well, I was listening last night, which was tonight for me, actually, since I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And you were having issues with finding out how women are attracted to men and how they show this. Yeah, how, right. how, no, the, he, he wants to create a manual that uh, teaches guys how okay. to... Okay. Uh, well, you mean I've signs? Got what? Would you like to hear those? Yeah, sure. go ahead. Okay. Well, one is how women look at men or how they don't look at men. Mm-hmm. So if a woman is standing near you and she sort of looks down, maybe like at her toes, and then she sort of like looks up at you, mm -hmm. through her eyelashes, mm -hmm. that's one way. You mean that's not like her checking out if her manicure's bad or her pedicure's <laughs> bad and going, oh, I hope he doesn't notice? Well, you see, I know what you're saying, but people don't look each other in the eye for the most part anyway. Well, I'm not saying she's looking at you in the eye because she probably wouldn't. Because you're talking being, about being coy? Yeah, she's being very coy. Coy. Yeah, coy. yeah, but... This is Diana thing where she sort of licks up through her eyelashes. And she's not necessarily looking at you. She might be looking at your shirt. All right, big okay. coy. All right, all right. Okay, so coy. Coy, big coy. Okay. Yeah. But, but coy can be actually just being shy and uninterested. Yes. Coy can be, yeah, being d defensive and hoping that that how person will catch the drift that you don't want to talk to them. How do you know it's real coy? Well, the real McCoy? You've got to look at, like, how close they are to you. I mean... Physically? You know, like, if, yeah. Yeah, but what if the guy is, like, sidling up and you can't escape? 
Okay, well, there's that little trick where you stick one foot out in front of you and you lean back on the other foot. That's uh -huh. what, what if you have really big boobs? <laughs> oh, well, then you're fine. in. I don't know. No, all right, well, Lily, so far this is not no help at all. What Keep else? going. Uh, okay, so, so say you're in a work environment or something like that, or maybe at a coffee house and somebody sort of comes up to you and sort of just leans a cheek on the table and leans into you with the shoulder. A mm -hmm. cheek, is that, okay. What right. Is an ass. Half yeah. sits. Right. It's a half sit. And they, yeah, they kind of lean forward and their skirt slides up a little bit. They're looking at you. Right. That's another way. Okay. I mean, do you need a bomb to go off in your pants for like a woman to... You I, know, you, you're you saying a lot of things that aren't making much sense. Well... But I appreciate her thought. I'm glad Vivica said that. She went from... Well, you were saying it with your eyes, too. I was just being your mouthpiece. Listen, I, I'm starting to just think that if a woman speaks to you, it means she likes you. Because otherwise, they just stay away from you. Don't they? You know what? I think I'm really into the overt school. Really? This is really where I come from. I don't believe in games because I think people get more and more confused. confused. Yep. And then they get confused and they're trying to figure out, well, you know, it's like that swingers thing. Never call her back when you, yeah. you just get stuck in a bunch of rhetoric, basically. Well, you, you have a sex slave, so obviously yeah, but you don't I, beat I, around the bush. I, no, I don't. <laughs> but what I do do is there's that just happens to be that particular relationship. Right. You have a few? I have a few. A few sex lives? No, a few relationships. Oh, that really? relationship in particular happens to be a love slave. Uh-huh. And, yes, he worships the goddess. Yeah. He does. The goddess in your pants? The goddess that I am. Do you do stuff to him? I have to, don't I? I, I don't know. Well, actually, no. This is an interesting, it's an interesting subject. It's this idea that people get what they want out of their relationship one way or another. They're either manipulating for it or they're being straight about what they want. Right. I, I know a lot of people who fight in their relationships so they can get that stimulated feeling of, you know what I'm talking we, we, about? We sort of talk about it as people casting a play. Right. They need people to be a certain character. Right. And they need to be a certain character in that dialogue. Exactly. For whatever reason. And they find ways, they find interesting ways to fill those those The roles, drama. Those dramas, yeah. And, and then, you know... It, and then they're, you know, thrilled at the, the horror, and they go around talking to all of their friends and going, right. oh, man, yeah. you know, she's yeah. so hard on me, man. Da, yeah. da, da. Bottom line is, for me, if you know what it is that you want me to play and you want to cast me, get, let, I'll audition. You tell me what it is. I'll see if it's something that I want to do. If I want to do it, I'll do it. I'll do it well. And then when it's over, it's over. It doesn't draw out into my relationship in a sloppy and, way. And, and, and for, 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 was beamed down from a, a plan, other planet. This is not a human hair. This is something altogether different. I'm not never, normal, never I agree, but this is why my relationships work. All right. Uh, that's no, it's, uh, it's really, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. It's sound. It's, There's nothing wrong with it. And every relationship is completely different because not everybody wants the same thing. It's like a negotiation. Don't like, they get jealous, though? What about a guy who wants monogamy? Well, the guys who want monogamy sometimes get upset that I don't want monogamy. Right. Um, and but that's kind of out front, and so I'm since I'm clear that that's not what I'm looking for at this time. Well, actually, most guys think that I'm perfect for them when they realize, oh, cool, yeah, she's like yeah. way open and completely doing her own right. thing. It's not like all oh, like, what are you doing tonight? Right, right. Like, come over. I'm like, watch the ball game. I'm out of here. You who, who do you want more, me or Drew? <laughs> seriously, I, you know, it's a toss up. It's a whole different kind of uh, energy. Don't be diplomatic. I'm seriously, not, you I, want Drew. Yeah. Only because okay. you are so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> You're aggressive in a whole other way. It's a sort of like, you want me, don't you? Right. You hate me, right? Yeah. It's like that girlfriend that you had when you were little who used to go, you don't like me anymore. To manipulate you, to say, Jenny, I like you. Would I be your friend if I didn't like you? Would I be here with you? And I just go, Jenny, you're right. And you're a sack. <laughs> That's the word you can't say on the radio. You oh, can't say that S word on oh, it. God. So you like Drew because he's laid back. No, because he's not the one that asked. Okay. Well, he wrote me a note and told me to ask. <laughs> but notice how he says you like Drew because now he's already done it. You've done that thing. That right. Jewish thing. I'm not Jewish. Well, what are you? What's your excuse? You're culturally Jewish. Am I culturally Jewish? Am culturally I? culturally challenged. It's just because it's Passover. Does everyone have to be Jewish? I don't know. Okay. Well, take a little break. The uh, irreverent uh, Vivica Davis is here. You can uh, find her in uh, Ed TV, at least the parts of her that weren't cut out. But uh, she's got a huge part because uh, she's uh, Matthew's uh, sister, right? Yeah. And uh, that's Ed, isn't it? That's Ed. All right, I got to see this movie. Drew, you haven't seen it? No. As soon as you found out you were cut out. That's right. Oh, Drew. Well, take a little break, and uh, then we'll be back. Bye. Hello. Hey, that all worked up. 
Vivica Davis is here. Vivica Davis is uh, currently in uh, Ed TV and uh, Message in a Bottle. Is, well, that's still out, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Where's your headphones? Oh, my God. <laughs> Put those on, baby. I need to put them back on. Hey, waving those hey, ears I'm all here. over the place. I'm, now I'm here. Yeah? Uh, you've seen her in uh, NYPD Blue, ER, Seinfeld. The one that guy. most people know me from is I played Winona Judd in that big miniseries about the Judds. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was when I rocked the house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like them Judds. Those Judd girls are all right. Drew, you into the Judds? The Judds, I, I mean the Judds. Yeah, I keep thinking you're saying that. Yeah, the Judds. No, no, that's, uh, that's the Judds. <laughs> Every time I think of uh, the Judds, though, I think of the uh, Mandrell sisters. Why? I don't know. They're like the 70s Judds. Yeah, I guess. That was the first time he had that moment, that family moment. Were there a bunch of Mandrells, though? Like yeah, there's couple. Barbara and uh, Larry and <laughs> the other Larry sister. Larry and, and uh, Diane. Captain and Tennille. Diane? Oh, hello. You're 22. You're 22, Diane. What's going Hi, on with you? Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, hey, Diane. Um, I had a question about um, menstruation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes my, well, all the time, my um, menstruation is delayed. It's just irregular. That's normal for some people. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, I was reading a book about um, natural healing, and I was wondering if, um, like, your diet plays a role. In Probably not. No, it, it says some things about Why does it bother you, Diane? That's your normal cycling. Excuse me? Why are you disturbed about this? Well, sometimes it's like um, when it's delayed. Well, I don't know if that's the term for it, but um, when, when it's starting to come on, it like comes on really, really slowly. Why does this bother you? Because I'd rather... Well, it, it'll, like, um, it'll like be in phases where it's like I have a discharge that's like clear... And then... D Diane, you keep describing to me in a regular period. Why does that bother you? Um, it, it doesn't bother me so much. Okay, and right. why are you worrying about it? Well, it's an inconvenience, but that's the way, that's your body's way of cycling. That's hey, just listen, your... forget about all that holistic crap. That oh, stuff no, don't do you anything. start. I'll do battle with you right here listen, about holistic. regular medicine barely works. This holistic stuff is like, oh, um... This yogi, he ate something and then he farted on a dust speck, and now you take it. And uh, it, I've never heard such a such a uh, B, BJ in my life. A BJ. That stuff does not work at all. You're full of sh. Hey, Diane, here, here's the deal. There, there's the hypothalamus and the pituitary control cycling, and some people that cycle is just not precise. Other things, there's something called a Stein Leventhal syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease endometriosis, or other things that contribute to it, thyroid conditions. It's something worth looking into to make sure it's not something that should be managed medically. But the predominant reality is that this is just how your brain controls your cycling, and it's normal, and that's just you. Isn't Stein Leventhal a management company? No. no? Asset management. Confused. Catherine. Oh. Catherine, darling. How are you? Catherine, you're 14. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I have a good friend. And she, I think she's a pathological liar. She always lies to me, but I can't stop trying to fix her. I can't stop trying to help her. Why? I don't know. I mean, I try to figure What's it out. What's the feeling you get from her that drives you to keep coming to her rescue? Well, I guess, I think she's depressed. I don't know. And what's the feeling you get that makes, well, that drives I feel like you? she's depressed, and I know I was depressed, and... So does it, does it put you in touch with those feelings that were so awful for you? Well, I guess to the point that I want to help her. Right. That, I don't that's want what people, her to feel that way. That's right. That's what people do is when they've had an awful feeling and they believe they're seeing that same feeling in somebody else, they have to do something. That's, what, that's why I talk about thick crust pizza all the time. I hate that crap, and I want, to, I want other people to avoid it, too. You wouldn't want them to go through no, that. No, thin crust. Oh, I see. Okay. You, you following that? Okay. Anyway. I understand what's really going on between your relationship, and I had a friend like that when I was growing up, and I think it, a lot of it has to do with, yeah, you don't want pain, and you don't want something that reminds you of pain, so you try to fix things when you see it in someone else, and I had a friend who was a pathological liar, she, her whole life went down a real... And I'm sure she is in a lot of pain, but this need to rescue is really about your pain, and your friend may really not want to be rescued. And the best way to help her is not to be responding to your own pain, but to be present for her when she needs you to be present and not constantly be driven by your own needs. Well said. Sarah. Hello. You're 28. Yes. What's going on? How y'all doing? Good. Um, I have a kind of a problem, I think. 
Um, I met this guy online, and we met at a public place, and we were talking and everything, and he seemed like he was a really nice guy, and then he started uh, doing things I didn't like in the bar, because that's where we were at. Like what? He started touching me, sticking his finger inside my shirt. This was your first visit with him? Yes. This is uh, an aggressive guy. Well, hold on. Get him out of it your was life. 45 minutes into it, though. This folks. is why you have to have a friend with you when you meet up with these folks. They, these internet relationships, such as they are now, and they're in the cyber world, are a mess. we got to clear them up. Sarah, you figure out a way to make them better. Sarah's 28. She sounds like she's 12. Yeah. What's well, that all about? I, I, have, I mean, I've never done that before. You know, so yeah, but why would you tolerate that? Why didn't you just well, I did. pop him one and call the police? I didn't. All right. I, I, I told him, you know, look, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I don't do things like that, you know. And um, Did you continue seeing him? Why didn't you just get up and leave at that point? No, I did. I left. Okay. I, had, I had a couple of the bouncers walk me out to my truck. Good. Well done. And then they're all done. And stuff. Okay. Um, but <laughs> he got my phone number. <laughs> Change your number. Call the police. Okay. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You don't, I mean, you don't tell Yeah, you don't need a weirdo in your life, and if you keep letting him be in your life, then you got to take a look this at This is where all this cyber stuff is not good. Yeah, it's dangerous. Needs to, it needs to be sorted out. We, we need to evolve a little, a big step forward in all yeah, this business. There's got to be a structure, because people don't know how to do right. this. That's people right. Are, people are trying to overcome the discomfort of making the initial contact, which I understand. But, but then, then they there needs allow, to be a way to go forward with yeah, that. Yeah, then their boundaries are so, like... Uh, uh, sort of, they don't, they're it's so out fantasy. of their depth. Yeah, it's all fantasy. They don't know where they really, like, That's well, funny. what do I let them get away well, with? Well, here's the deal. Eventually, these people that are socially inept have to come together. Mm. And then there's trouble. Yeah. <laughs> That's when the rape starts. Sounds like a, a bar scene. Yeah. So, Sarah, what's... Well, she told me I was, I was really closed-minded. Well, that's just him right, trying to manipulate right. you. you. Yeah, I don't worry. Take Sarah, it away. What, what one of those things you hate. Sarah. What happened to you, Sarah? Are you victimized in some way? It must have been. <laughs> what happened? Well, I just... Um, Sarah? I haven't gone out or done anything. What happened else? to you? Why? What happened? Well, because of the last relationship I no, was... No, before, before that. Way before that. that. What do you mean, way before that? Who took advantage of you? When you were 12. Uh, my... My ex, well, he was my ex-fiance. <laughs> Before that, why did you choose an abuser like that? Well, I didn't. Well, he was really nice when I first met him. No, so <laughs> where's your dad? I have no idea. Uh, why not? How about your stepdad? When did he leave and how old were you when he left? How old was I? Oh, um, 15. All right. What did he do to you? My father? Yeah. He didn't do anything to me. Why did he leave? Well, he got remarried and... Why did he leave? Oh, my parents got divorced. Well, how come? I don't know. They All right, so she, he got... He was a good dad. He's he was a good a dad. Father. And then he got remarried. And my stepmother used to beat me, and so there I we go. There Okay, we there it is. Okay, Gold that's mine. what we're looking for. He was a good dad. He just married a chick who beat you? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. he was a good dad? I allowed that yeah, to happen. that's not yeah. really a very good thing. Well, it's not do his fault. It's and and now his whereabouts are unknown. Where is oh, he now? Yeah. What a committed fellow. I, I don't know. Why not? He's such a good guy. Well, maybe he's out with like the... his wife. Maybe he's out with the Peace Corps or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know he li I know what state he lives in. All right, oh. so we, we have to go get I the bottom of this. I don't speak to him or nothing. So. All right, it's right. interesting we were picking up that you sounded like a young teenager because that's that's where That's what happened, yeah. All right, Sarah, you're stuck. you got to get a little therapy. Don't mm -hmm. don't try to qu correct yourself via the internet. That's just for masturbation, strictly. <laughs> you understand? And take it from him; he's the expert. And and buying uh, '70s compilation CDs. But Sarah, you, listen, I can hear it in your voice, sweetie. Right? You sound like you're 15. Actually, I guess 12. No, I'm 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 28. 28. I know, but you sound okay. Like, We're not saying you're lying about your age. Like We're you're saying 12. that emotionally you're stuck at that age that that trauma happened. Your, your dad was not the guy you, you think or thought he was by any stretch of the imagination. I, I don't know where your mom is, but you have to work out these things so that you can have a good relationship. That's all. So don't start the relationship yet. Get a little counseling, work out a few you'll, you'll problems, and then you can pick, have one. continue to pick victimizers. Or people who betray you. All right, sir. So same difference, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you know, people hate it. People hate it. That Tell crap. Tell the truth. Oh, well, it's like, I, l listen, 
all I do is hear people all night long. I'm just hear it right. I hear, heard it in her, Sarah's voice. Uh, the first three syllables she spat out. It was she was like kind of broken. You can tell, and everybody with this uh, idealized cramp at their family. Just because one parent wasn't the one who was actually kicking the s out of you doesn't mean the other one the saint. was a saint. Yeah. The well, other one brought the step parent into your life so that they could beat the s out of you. In my view, that makes them worse mm. because here's the deal: to, mm -hmm. to happen, I can go out anywhere and find some a hole to come beat me up. <laughs> I mean, that's easy. It's the person that facilitates that. That's the loved one. I yeah. mean, that's your flesh and your blood. That's that is your biological parent. They go out, find the person, bring them back, and then they have their way with you. Until you handle that relationship, you can't go on. I had a really funky childhood. Drew, are you floored? Does she have a funky childhood? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it to to surface. Well, I mean, but the fact that I I mean, my my childhood was outrageous. It was my. I had a boyfriend who used to call it cruel and unusual. What was your childhood? Well, my mom and dad were both r really amazingly bright people, and at 28, my dad became epileptic, and just. I don't know, epilepsy is one of those things you hit your head too many times when you're a kid or whatever. They're not really sure. Frontal lobal damage, he whatever. Didn't, he didn't do drugs? No, then he starts self-medicating with alcohol. So you got I, an, I promise you he was doing drugs before Drew's got, yes. Well, he was an alcoholic, probably, but yeah. alcoholics don't start using at 28. They fool around before that, and that's how they get their seizures. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, whatever the combination is, I know plenty of alcoholics who aren't epileptics, but the fact was that if he wasn't willing to take his medication or he was taking his medication and drinking, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So he went from one career to another. It doesn't matter how many master's degrees the guy has. At a certain point, he just became a sort uh -huh. of broken... Yeah. yeah. And the pattern went on and on until it was a couple days in pr jail, and then a couple days in prison, then a couple weeks, and a couple years. And my dad spun off into this total, you know, abstraction. And my mom ended up, you know, this woman who thought she was going to have a professor as a husband and four kids living in Brentwood is a single working mother doing what she's got to do to work at the law school to raise four kids. Nice. And we're living in a neighborhood that isn't great with not great public schools. Start getting bussed downtown. Luckily, I get discovered as an actress when I'm 11 years old and start acting. Mm -hmm. But then my stratosphere opened up because on one hand, I'm a regular kid who at 11 years old, my dad's like so potentially violent it wasn't that he was a beater he was a threatener which is psychological damage is way kind of beyond because you never know what he's going to do he could lose it he could to control that right so he's this so i grew up i completely lost my childhood how'd you get discovered acting i was in a school downtown and alan parker that guy who discovers everybody the lawyer no fame no, larry, <laughs> larry parker, parker. 2.1 yeah. i didn't get my 2.1 million yet you uh you, yeah you, you were <laughs> discovered at 11, what'd you do at 11? Shoot the moon. This oh, movie yeah. with Diane Keaton and Albert Finney about divorce, about my life. It was m my life, you know, and he had found all these young sort of actor kids that were actor kids. And then he liked me because I was a real normal, well, what is normal? A real kid. Oh, those were the days. Those were the days. And then, and then you just kept acting from that point I on? I kept acting from that point on. So I made it all the way through being a child actor without ever, ever having a major eating disorder or a drug addiction. And that's my victory. And the fact that oh. I worked all those years and actually made a living and survived is secondary to the fact that I somehow, through having such an extremely dysfunctional reality, somehow was forced to confront major emotional issues psychological stuff being you know got taken to foster home when i was 11 years old because my dad was dangerous and my mom was they weren't well. clear whether my dad could meanwhile i'm also a movie star mm. so the the the, the stratosphere between being a normal kid and then being bust downtown where i'm 10 percent white mm. in a completely ethnic neighborhood and you're on tv one morning or one night and you go to school the next day and everybody has a reason to hate you oh, so i mean radical like it was warfare. It was um, social warfare. And I learned a lot about who I was and what my peer group was. and what. So I had a lot of experience with it. So people would come up to me and go, how do you deal with that? I go, sweetie, what you got to do is this. Because I had this, you know, uh, boot camp you, of, of life. Uh, you, didn't, no, you, you didn't get the uh, eating disorder. No, or, I, I handled the, it, but it was not easy. 
But you do have a sex life, which is uh, more than uh, many a child yeah. actor can say. <laughs> right. All right. But I, see, you love that. You keep saying sex slave, and it really is uh, love slave. Let, let me yeah. explain something. I'm good at ordering people when, around. When you say love slave, everyone hears sex slave. Okay, anyway. good. Well, he's my sex slave. Uh, That's fine. Speaking of eating disorder, I've been trying to get some goddamn peanuts out of my mouth let's go. for about three hours now. You so I'm going to take peanuts. a break. Drew. Give me some money, please. What's all this? That's no He's good for that machine. He's giving you money. Oh, that no, machine is bad. All right. Make it work, Drew. Let's go. We'll be back. Make it happen. Drew, you give it the Jewish Drew. touch. You've heard of the Midas touch. Drew's got the Jewish touch. Drew it means can do things with money that can, no one can imagine. You can feed old dollars into machines and make it work. We'll oh, be back. Oh, yeah. Huh? Hello. Hey, it's Loveline. i got to get some snacks in here, Drew. I'm going insane. 20 years of therapy. Vivica Davis is here. This is what, this is what made her so you, unique. You, you need therapy. Your life either has to be therapy or you have to seek therapy. I mean, everything is an opportunity to learn what's not working. Look around. Listen to Dr. Drew. Don't listen. Thank you. Vivica Davis is here. She's uh, speaking currently of, in Ed TV. Speaking of not working relationships, I was trying to explain to her what we're like in an airport. You guys are beyond yeah, intimate How would you describe here. us in an airport? We make out. Dysfunction <laughs> Junction. Ladies oh, and gentlemen. Please. No, just because we fight over, like, distances that the plane has to travel and right. what the route's going to no, be. No, it's really a perfect marriage. It's the odd sit. couple. Well, we don't edit ourselves very much, and we, we, don't, take, we, we don't take time to sort of uh, say things a certain way or, you know, sort of uh, dilute the message. So you celebrate your unique Adam usually, opposition. usually starts at it. Listen, you stupid F. That's, right. That's... <laughs> Jelly. Terms of endearment. Jelly, you're 15. Yes. What's going on? Um, uh, about three months ago, me and my girlfriend had sex, and I used the condom and everything. And about three weeks later, she didn't have her period yet, and we both thought she was pregnant. And she went and got one of them tests done, and it turned out negative. And, you know, that was a real good thing for me at that point. And... Now she's still been wanting it, but I've been scared. And How old is she? Fifteen. Don't you, don't you feel a bit young to be involved in all this? I mean, just think if for some reason the things you guys are trying to use as contraception fails and you end up with a kid. Then what? You're not really ready for that, are you? Not really. I mean, maybe you're not ready to be doing this just yet. Not to say that that's the reason you sh are not ready, but it's one of the reasons. It's sort of the way you're reacting lets you know that this is... Maybe more than you're prepared to deal with. I, I went through a period when I, between 16 and 19 where I decided I didn't want the responsibility of having to make a decision like having an abortion or dealing with something like that. So I backtracked. And I just literally didn't have um, intercourse for three years. Really? Yeah. I did other a things. A lot of blowjobs, though, right? Hey, lots of, lots of other things, which is probably where I developed all sorts of... TMJ. Free, freedom. <laughs> you are rude. But I like it. <laughs> turns start, me on. Starting to get you going you now, see, huh? You see, this is what I'm saying. is If you're not having intercourse, you find other things that turn you on. See, like the deal is she, rudeness. She was, now you know that she's been abused, you have to start abusing her. Right? Oh, the, the yeah. That, that'll get her hot. Yeah, right. But I'll go home with Drew. You'll see how, we're, how it'll work. No, you won't. No, I won't because he's married and you I don't, don't do that. You don't got a choice, honey. I don't have a choice. I'll grab a handful of that Goldilocks hair of yours and drag you right to the back of my car. And then what happens? Then the duct tape comes down. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, and he's he's well. We should take his advice. I, listen, I just know I, 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 I can dial myself in any woman. Dial in, baby. Quit, keep dialing because you haven't got the wrong number. Oh, no. No, I was known as Don Juan in my junior college Don days. Don Juan! Don oh, yeah. wishes. <laughs> Cindy. Yes. You're 33. Yep. It's a good age, Don Cindy. Don Juan Quixote. <laughs> you, know, you know you'd love some too, wouldn't you, bitch? <laughs> oh, God. Look at that. We've Anyway's. riled him up. What's up, oh, Cindy? Oh, boy. <clears throat> What's going on there? Okay. I have, um, I'm getting married, but um, my fiance is kind of like out of town right now. R and he town. wanted me to find out um, what the lifespan is on sperm. So Where are you if keeping he would it? send it to me, would I be able to get pregnant? No. Is he in the Marines or something? Uh -huh, pretty much. Mm, <laughs> you mean he's in jail? No, 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 no. no. Where is he? 
Where is he? He's going to kill me, so no, we can't do that. He's in jail. <laughs> He's in yeah. lockdown. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Well, I, I have a lot of people that I love that are in lockdown, so that's okay. The issue He's is... listening right now. So. Uh, well, How what? long is he going to be gone for? Uh, quite a while. How long? I mean, like a long time. Like a lifetime? Or like 20 years? Or like, like 10? Like a, li like a lifetime. What? She yeah. met somebody. Did you know this person before he went down, or did you meet him after in one of those really interesting relationship uh After, me I met meeting. his mom. His mom lives next to my mom. And said, I have a really beautiful man for you, but he happens to be low maintenance? Actually, I was going out with another guy that was locked up at the time. <laughs> And I kind of just met right. her. And well, then some I, women like guys in lockup. I, yeah. I've visited plenty yeah, of prisons and met plenty of people like Quiet down there, Vivica. Let me get to something for a second here. Uh, what's he? What's what's he in prison for? And we can't discuss that. It's life, life in prison. I mean, he it's killed just, somebody. Yeah, he had to kill somebody. Oh no. He killed somebody. No, he didn't kill somebody. He attempted to kill somebody. No, it was, there was an accident, and oh. and. He had nothing to do with it. Huh? This would happen to be walking by. Involving uh, him beating the ass out of someone with a pool cue, yeah. right? No. Listen. Let's get to the problem. He's in prison for life, you goofball. And I love him. You love him because you're screwed up. <laughs> Please. What happened to you? What prison was your dad in? <laughs> I don't know where my dad's at. Of right. course you know. Maybe he's with my dad. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Your dad's still in prison? Huh? No, my dad has become one of those homeless wonder people. Really? really? Yeah, he oh. was at, when he got out of prison, he started going into mental institutions, which was kind of better, because at least he was a medical problem. Yeah. And then it was one of those things where I had to say, I can't be responsible for this person, because uh. he ruins my life if I let him into it. Mm. So I had to sort of watch him from not too far, but far enough, but too close for comfort. And then he, a couple years ago, we just sort of... Family sort of just said, "Look, Larry, we can't do. You're like the child dependent from hell," and he sort of disappeared. His shame got to Oof. him or something, and I don't know. I think he's he may. Every time I see somebody on the street it, and it might look like him, I check the face. That's, hey, that's the truth. Hey, uh, Cindy. Yeah. Um, that's the truth. Well, how is it that you guys can get married when he's in prison? They they allow weddings there. And, well, how can you get married and not get impregnated? I mean, you can have a marriage but not consummate the marriage you can yeah, consummate if he's like been they took it away from people that are in there for life good yeah. <laughs> fantastic because because yeah. someone psychotic psychopath had to blow it for everybody well yeah. listen i don't want i don't want these lifers getting married either yeah but you know the ones that don't deserve you know listen to be in there that long. they all deserve, deserve it. It. ask him i have a question does he have a brother yeah go get that Ooh. Yeah, he's 18 years old oh well oh he's heading for prison too <laughs> Poor oh, idiots. Listen to me. They, uh, listen, uh, tell the uh, chick from uh, L.A. Magazine to put this on her list. When, when you're in prison, you're deprived of certain privileges. Cable TV, fornication, and marriage. I don't want anyone getting married in prison. It sets a bad example for those on the outside who don't want to get married. <laughs> or do. It, it, really, you should be getting married from inside the joint. I mean, listen, if you're, if you're incarcerated, you can't get married. What That's if, it. What if they want to marry somebody else who's in prison like they're bitch? They can have inner... Right. inner I will make exemptions. Inner I, prison marriages is okay. I'll make exemptions for bitches. Right. All right. but Because they should have the honor and the dignity of, of having wedlock. That's true. Okay. I'm going to take a little break. Cindy, uh, hang on, Sarah. Cindy, Give this let, man some peanuts. We'll get back to her later. i got to get right. some peanuts. Right. Okay, bye. Got my beloved peanuts. I can get those for you. All right. Friend. Listen, everybody. We got to take a 10 second station identification and we'll be back with more Loveline in 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. KNRK has more than 50 rock and roll. New rock alternative. True, you talk for a while. I gotta True, eat let's talk about things that really matter. No. Let's talk about relationships and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were just see if Peanut Man can just handle himself. Like, he can man. masturbate emotionally man. She, over she, she does have a better, yeah. clearer I went from being head. hung like a horse to Peanut Man. <laughs> well, it's, you know, the horses, getting to know you, horses yeah. like eating grass, you know? I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with power. Okay. True? What, what? Oh, wait. Uh, Vivica Davis is here. That's she me. is currently in Ed TV. 
I know it just seems like we pulled a mad woman off the street and dragged her into the studio. <laughs> Which is true. But she's a bona fide actress, everybody. I mean, the Ed TV message in a bottle, all, all the uh, NYPD blues and the ERs and the Seinfelds and uh, all that good stuff. What, what, what do you have coming out? That's the question. Um, I just did a movie with Tom Hanks. There's a couple of nice scenes with Tom Hanks. I don't know him. No. Bob Zemeck is his new movie, and that's not going to come out for forever. Another because... woman without a father? No. no. What Another woman without a father? No, no, I play Pilot Gwen. I'm now people who now who run things. Oh, I see. I'm now getting positions of authority because I've survived. Right. right. Yes. So what is this new movie that uh, Bob Zemeckis did it with Tom Hanks? It is called Cast Away, and there's a year break in between the filming. They shot half of it, and then Tom's going to lose 60 pounds and then he's going to shoot the other half of it. So this won't come out for another year and a half or something, well into the new How's millennium. He's going to lose 60 pounds. Well, like he did before, which is he does this very strict diet, and it takes about a year. So in between, he'll make another movie. But it's about a guy who gets stranded on an island. Huh. So you come back and see him four years after he crashed. Huh. So and That's um, it. He wants another Academy Award. Whenever yeah. someone really uh, is bucking for Academy Award, they pack on the weight, and, and they then drop, they drop it. it off. Or vice versa, they drop it yeah. off and then pack it on. Because yeah. you could really go back and... Pull uh, a raging bull on them. Yeah. Raging bull or Philadelphia, whatever whatever guy has weight fluctuates. And uh, when a chick does it, she's just a lard ass. So when a guy does it, he's <laughs> going for a roll. <laughs> it's much easier to be a guy. Isn't that typical? Let's talk about that. No, we got to take calls. <laughs> All right, so Cindy... When we left off with you, you want to know if uh, sperm could be sent uh, via the mail so that you could be knocked up by your permanently incarcerated fiancé. There's yeah. hope he might get out. Well, I hope he doesn't. Now, listen to me. Uh -huh. I don't know what you think you're doing or what you've been through, but knock it off. Stop having relationships with prisoners. You understand? This is the last one, and this is the only one I want. You you already da dated another prisoner, right? Well, he was he. No, I was going out with him before. Ooh, he got locked up. the before, drama. Oh, uh, he got locked up. Okay, well that's different. It's just a it's just a dangerous type. It just seems like every time I date him, he gets locked up. <laughs> yeah, but Cindy, you, you got to realize this is just because uh, you you come from an abortion, right? <laughs> I mean, your family was a mess, and and now you got to keep it going. And worst of all, you want to bring a kid into this. Yeah, what no, that's thinking? really the issue. You don't have any kids, do you? Yeah, I have three kids. Oh, oh you need another one. I was married for 11 years. To somebody who went Beat to prison? And took a, you know, just a total idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. How old are your kids? How old are your kids? Uh, 14, 12, and 10. So I have a question. So and They all know about them. Having a, oh, great. a relationship with a man who's not present, uh -huh. on some level, it's kind of satisfying because they don't really blow it. Uh -huh. On the other hand, you've really resigned yourself to never having a relationship with a man who's there and supportive and can break that pattern of dysfunction. What about your kids? Well, see, with him, it's... Think of the model of the relationships they're going to have. What are they going to go out? No, they're, they're screwed all You day. have an opportunity to change this pattern, but not by going down the route you're going. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I, I love this guy... He's everything I've ever Cindy, listen to what we're doing. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, let's do a little recap there for a second. He's everything I've always wanted. What is that exactly? Well, obviously a guy who was incarcerated for the rest of his life. Yeah. Is that everything you've always wanted? Talk about uh, a low bar. But that is right. It's a guy that one can't screw up. He of course. It's a fantasy. Yeah. It's the same screw up. You know, up and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that as a fantasy, but you've got three kids... And you're talking about bringing another child in the world, and and the reality no. of what you're talking about is so. Cindy, you should be up. sterilized. Oh, you really Cindy. should be sterilized. Do you understand this? Why should I be sterilized? Because you have three kids. You're currently screwing up, and you're planning on a fourth. You're not thinking straight, hun. Who's paying for these three kids? Their father. What father? Their father that has them. Is he is he living with them? Yes. The, the abusive guy. Yeah. That's great. So, so you, you let your kids go with him, I and had you'd like to have point. another one, so you can like you can't send that kid into the prison system. So I you're going to have to take this one. Got him, because he went ahead and got married as soon as we got divorced. Yeah. Let me let me tell you, they That's must have had some goods on you, Cindy. They don't just give kids away to the dad. They don't take kids away from the mom unless there's something funky going on, honey. No, their dad. They they decided that their father, because he had another wife and he was married after we split up and got divorced, that it was a better environment for them to have two parents. All right. 
and under, under one roof. That the, was what the... Uh, with the abuse of... She's yeah. having an empty nest syndrome. They said that the abuse was nothing. Just like him cheating on me the whole time we were married was nothing. All right, Cindy, stop it. The drama, man. Stop you watch the a lot drama. of soap operas? No, do you, do they, don't even, they don't even stretch this far in soaps. Well, they do, but everyone's good looking, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. All right, everybody. Cindy wants to have another kid, everybody. Let's rejoice. <laughs> Terry. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I'm wondering if guys smoke the pot seeds, if they can go sterile. Why do you ask that? Terry? Yeah. Why do you ask that? Oh, I'm um, just wondering because people told me that and then some people say it, does, it couldn't. So I'm just wondering. There are lots of things marijuana can do to the a developing young person. Yeah. That, that is not one of it's them. It's too bad, though. Why it? we have to stick to the ones that it doesn't do and ignore the, what we know it does do is just... Right baffling to me. Well, do you know anyone who smokes pot seeds? Um, well, there's like, yeah, some people, they don't clean it when they get it, when they get it like, packed in there. Whatever. It's just, so. look, it's gonna, sh it shrinks the right frontal lobe, uh, lowers sperm count, increased breast growth, all kinds of good stuff. Well, maybe it lowers your sperm count a little. Maybe that's yeah. what they're thinking. Okay. No, it doesn't, uh, it will not uh, make you sterile. It will make you blind. It will make you so stupid. <laughs> no, it doesn't make you stupid. It'll make you blind because when you put the liner to it, it explodes and goes right in your eye. You ever had that happen, Drew? You know, when you're sucking off that big hookah pipe in college, and the guy <laughs> sparked it up, and he goes, it's golden, and then the thing blows up. There goes your you politi right in the political career there, Drew. I didn't, didn't inhale. Didn't inhale. No. Courtney. Hey, what's up? You're 17. Cool, what's up? Um... I got like the typical jerk boyfriend problem and it's like a pattern and I don't know why I keep going for the same crappy types. How can you tell her why? Because your your dad was probably either something like that or your so, something in your past. Let's discuss. Um, where do you want to start? You know, well, what's your relationship? You can leave this show now, Adam. The replacement of a Thank God I can eat. Go, yeah, baby. just you need more food and I need to chat. <laughs> So, you know, did you have a relationship with your father? Was he somebody who was abusive? No. Was he there at all? No, he wasn't. Okay, so you don't have a relationship or a real good role model with a man. Yeah. And so you feel that you need love and you feel like you maybe don't deserve love. So you find somebody who's obviously not very worthy. But and, I really thought he was. Well, yeah, but that's that's the good thing. I mean, if you if you notice that each time a man becomes abusive in some way if you continue the relationship beyond where it becomes obvious to you then yeah. let's talk about it no listen i like when people's excuses but i thought he was a nice guy yeah. <laughs> like uh well he's beating the crap but yeah he drinks a lot yeah yeah but yeah. he but then he my apologizes like, yeah. well you can break up well i thought he was nice he's really tender yeah. And he takes me out to a nice dinner every once in a while it, after he cares about me so much that he gets that upset. Yeah, he's about passionate. Our he's yes. passionate yeah. about how I need uh. to change so I can be perfect for him. Oh. oh. See, all these uh, papas not raising their daughters it's and the sucking. daughters just go nuts. They have no gauge. Guys can handle it. Young girls can't. And when I'm in charge, Drew, I'm going to put the beat back in deadbeat dad. <laughs> That's You're, my policy. Well, hey, it's not, not just the dads. It's not just no, the dads. Men, it's the dads. No, let me tell you. Men who have screwed up relationships with their mothers, I've dated a few of those, and you don't know what you're getting into until you find out what you're getting into, and you right. find out you're getting into a relationship with a man who's got a really screwed up but, relationship but you know with his who, mother. You know who created those screwed up moms? Their dads. Their dads. <laughs> That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Alex. Hello? You're 16. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, Goes. here's our love line policy. You can only say the S word twice in a 15 second period. Unless you've said something terribly interesting surrounding that. <laughs> Alex says S twice in, in about four and a half seconds. What the hell is wrong with everybody? Well, he's got a problem, obviously. He's aware of that. Dan. Yeah. Says he has green streaks in his semen. Have you been eating kelp? No, that's not me. Not you. That was uh, <laughs> that was Alex. The way, uh, Sorry. Don't want to blame you for that publicly on the radio nationally. Alex is going to have to rot on hold for another hour before I talk to him. What's up, Dan? Um, well, 
about a couple nights ago, I was out getting drunk with a bunch of my buddies, right? And my girl said she had to go do something, she, so she couldn't go with us. And I come to find out my friend wasn't there either, so the next morning, my friend starts hitting uh, oh, He slept with her. Oh, and did Dan put the S word in there, yes. too? Okay, you know what? It was me. I set a bad example. Dan was laughing at Alex. Ah, you know how silly he is? I don't think he could hear Alex. He's got a delay thing. He's a little smarter than that. He, although he does have that accent. That's, that's Every one of our listeners has Tourette's, Drew. That's, all, that's, that's what it is. Hold on, let me hold Dan for a second. Hey, Dan? Yeah? I'm going to let you rot on hold for a while longer because you worked the S word in. Right after our last caller worked the S word in. All right. All right. They tough love. They they know how to take it. Eddie? Yeah. You want to just say S right off the top and get it over with? No, I don't need to say that. Okay, you're 23. Yes. I just had a question. I have two kids. I'm 23 years old. Wow, how old are they? Okay, my daughter's two and my son's two months old. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I'm, uh, I'm like real verbally abusive to my daughter. Mm. I mean, it's like the littlest thing she does, it just, just sets me off. Mm -hmm. And it's like there, there's times where I just want to like grab her and just, just like just squeeze her just to make her stop doing what she's doing. But it's like, you know, oh, like yeah, try to walk away. And, like, you've got to get some help because well, you, I mean, you're going to do this. I mean, I have. I've, I've, I've went to counseling, you know, I went to like anger management classes, but it's like. It's How about just, some parenting classes? What's that? How about some parenting classes? Well, see, I haven't been to that. See, I think. What it has a lot to do with, I listen to your guys' show every night when I'm at work. Yeah. And it's like, I listen to some of the people that call and, you know, about, like, you guys always ask about the past. You know, how was your, how was your life growing up? My life was like, every weekend, I was a punchy bag for my uncle. Mm. You know, my uncle drank a lot. I got hit, so, I mean, I didn't get hit. I pretty much got beat up, you know, punched, everything. How much older is your uncle than you? Uh, my uncle's a lot older. He's... He's pretty much, he's in his 50s now. Who is this, three. your, is this your mother or father's brother? This is my, this is my mom's uncle. Your mom's Mom uncle brother. or your mom's brother? No, it's my mom's uncle. So he's your, your mom's uncle. Bro father's brother? It's my mom, it's my grandma's brother. Grandmother's brother. Wow. Well, it's like yeah. great uncle. Yeah. You know, what is it uh, with families where they, like, beat or they have sex with? I, I don't understand. I mean, <clears throat> I can understand, you know, smacking around your own kid, but I could never go to someone else's house and whack around their kid. That's out of line. Hey, you have a chance to break this cycle here. Well, see, that, that, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, cause I think I have a lot of, like, rage and animal. Yeah, of course. Him. Well, you of have course. just deep pain. I mean, that is not a funny situation for you to have been in, and you've suppressed it so long that now it comes out when... You're most vulnerable, which is when you're most afraid. Yeah, I mean, kids, the, kids stir up all your old stuff. It, it bothers me though, because I, you know, I've always told my, even my girlfriend, I told her I, I'll never, even before I had my kids, I told her, you know what, I'm never going to yell at my kids, I'm never going to hit them. And here we are. But now that they're here, it's just totally opposite. Yeah. Whatever you announce, you're not going to be is what you end up doing. You've got to get some parenting classes, and you need you need some supervision in this. It's a good thing you're aware of it. You have an opportunity to break the cycle that is so entrenched in your family. But you got to know that this is gonna this is gonna be a disaster if you don't do something about it. And you may have already done a little Gone damage here. And uh, we, we, you've got to do something. You've got to get some help and supervision with this. Well, it's not too bad. She's a chick. She'll be a stripper. She'll marry an abusive guy. But she's not gonna bring any harm to me. Listen, I don't mind. Got a bunch of kids. By the time she's ooh, kids. that's right, Drew. Yeah, one of them's gonna be a boy. It's gonna do harm to me. That's right, Katie. Yeah. I forgot how it worked. You're 14. Yeah. What's going on? Not much. <laughs> well, why'd you call? <laughs> well, I'm just, I don't know. I'm confused a lot. My dad, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen him for a while. And I'm just curious how I could start a relationship with my dad again. Where is he? He's in Galt. I was in, I'm, I was in Galt, but I'm up here with my friend in Angel's Camp right now. Oh, okay. So he's down in Galt. Yeah. You yeah, know, well, that's only about uh, 35 minutes from Maples County where you are, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I think if you took Find these, a friend who drives. You should be able to oh, take... I, I live in Galt, too. Oh, you're in Galt. All right, well, then just get on Sycamore I'm and keep going straight till you get uh, you down know to I the Mohawk Station. What I used to do is I used to hitchhike. I just hitchhike. Start oh, hitchhiking. No, I'm, it's a joke. It's Before. not even a funny joke. I'm just following my peanut friend here. Where's Galt? 
It's in the middle of, uh, you know where Lodi is? <laughs> no. I, I, what state are we I in? I know that... California. I know, oh. yeah, because, uh, because I know that uh, John Fogarty was stuck out in Lodi again. <laughs> he put Lodi on the map. <laughs> All right. Stuck out in Lodi again. You know that song, Katie? No. Wrong generation. <laughs> right. Uh, you're, so, uh, anyway, why doesn't your dad want to have a relationship with you? He does, mm. but he just doesn't know how. He's, I don't know. Mm. That makes sense. Why don't you write him a letter? I have. have did I he, did. Did he write back? No. Mm. Why don't you write him another letter? Because mm. why, why try? Yeah. Well, no. Maybe you don't want a relationship with this guy. Uh, I'm not, not maybe you don't. Mm. Maybe uh, what I found in my life is I found... Um, other people to replace people uh -oh. like a healthy replacement no i mean hey maybe Sex maybe life. i'm just, stop it what i'm talking about is i found healthy people that were good role models like i have sort of i call him my fake dad like my fake brothers here because i met a really great guy who really is a good father he's got great kids he's got a great relationship this with guy that. what the guy in the next room he's like my fake brother oh really mm -hmm. straight Stuck straight there? It's usually uh, fake brothers and fake dads are always gay. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Not no, not for me. Not, not for you. No, I've just uh, there. Are, there are really healthy, good individuals out there, and yes. it's it's like you know, just because that person didn't meet my mom and fall in love with my mom and become my stepdad, right? Didn't mean that I couldn't find ways of having a friendship right. or having conversations with somebody at least who's who would understand. Uh, you need you need friends, Katie. You need friends. Oh, I have plenty of friends. I yeah, have, but, but I'm saying friends that not aren't those fourteen year ups you're hanging out with. We're talking about real friends. Yeah, All that's right. how I worked out <laughs> some of my stuff with my dad. Is yeah, to have right, healthy. Katie, I, I I I feel bad that your dad is the kind of guy that he is. It and you know what? Here's the thing. I I know it, you'll never be able to hear this, but it's n it's nothing personal. He would do this to anybody. It doesn't matter that you're his child. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a personal thing. He's a screw-up. He's unable to rise to this occasion of fatherhood. And unfortunately, you have to bear the brunt of this. Yeah. And I know it's going to be near impossible for you not to take it personally, but he's not capable of it right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so what you have to do is bury yourself in things that feel good, like getting good grades, after school sports or activities friends because you don't need people that don't make you feel good and this guy doesn't make you feel good and each time you send him a letter and he doesn't send one back you feel a little worse that's true so do the things that make you feel good yeah and i'm not talking about getting loaded i'm just talking about excelling and overcoming okay yeah all right katie Thanks. take care the guy lives in lodi it really is about approval though isn't it you're looking for approval? Wait a minute. I think I rented Lodi last... Wait, that was spelled... In, there, in your parental relationships, you're looking for love, uh, approval? Yeah, that's right. Okay. No, but it, I mean, approval means all kinds of things to people. Well, I guess that's what it was for me. Like, I'd find teachers. I, I would excel in something, like you said. And then I would find somebody who respected me or appreciated me or the way, you know, and so it sort of did handle some of those issues about uh, what me. A, what appreciated. a bitch, though. I mean, it, you'd, you'd be better off just having your dad dead or uh, incarcerated or something like that than having a dad who lived uh, down the road. Eh, just eh, he can sort of take it or leave it. Eh, huh. you know, a hassle. Maybe if the car broke down in front of the house, he'd yeah, come in and use brutal. the phone. That's I mean, brutal. That is just, it's, it's so despicable. I, I really hate those guys. I, I really do. And then I look at like what situation did they come out of that mm. they're so messed up. Like, the, you know, chicken or the egg, you can't just say, oh, this is the first guy who's a right. total... Oh, almost, almost. I almost did it. I'm sorry. Wow. Well, you're here. You're practically cussing, but you do it so well. I know. I'm very skilled at it. That's why you're turned on by me. Yeah. Mandy. Uh -huh. We're going to break. All right. Hold on. You're 21. Yeah. You've had uh, your period for a month straight. Yeah. <laughs> following your depot shot. Yeah. All right. Drew will tell you all about that. we got to take a break, though. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Just uh, stay there. You bleeding now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stay off the nice furniture. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> right. God. Well, come on. You need to be... You need no. to be...
something. That's right. I mean, I You're know just you. You're someone to do I that something. I think I am. Yeah, see I that? Think I think I am. I knew I'd win her over. She started on Drew, but now she's on no, me. No, see, Drew is all right. You have you have a way. You're now asking subconsciously for the domination you desire. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Also, if you just weave some napping and masturbation into there, well, you, you handle that area. I'll just order you around. Okay, fine. As long as your first command is to nap. Nap. Thank you. Hey, what do you got there, Brett? Oh Lord, stuck in Lodi again. That's stuck out in Lodi, right? I guess a lot of people don't know the uh, words of that song. Okay, so as it turns out, I'm not insane. Vivica Davis is our guest tonight. Her and Drew loped somewhere. I don't know where these two are. What a luxury it must be for you, Drew, to have me at the helm constantly keeping a vigil. I'm trying to buy you some peanuts. Oh, really? Yeah. Buy me some peanuts. Let's buy you some peanuts. We'll split them. Where's Vivica? I have no idea. <clears throat> Uh-oh. I think he drove her over the edge. Vivica Davis, who uh, turns out to be uh, one of the more interesting people I've met, is uh, a very accomplished actress. She's currently in uh, Ed TV. She's in uh, Message in a Bottle, Dangerous uh, Dangerous Woman, PCU. That was kind of a funny college movie. Curly Sue, Ricochet, Shoot the Moon. Wow. That was the movie she got started in when she was like 11. And, uh, when was that? Well, was it the what, 70s? Uh, yeah, I get, well, 80s. I don't know what the hell that was. Albert Finney. She's been in uh, ER, NYPD Blue, Seinfeld, Single Guy. A bunch of, bunch of movies. All right, Drew? Yeah. TV, I should say. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Mandy. Hi. You're 21. Yeah. All right, so your period has uh, been gone after you got the Depo Provera shot. Mm -hmm. Didn't the doctor tell you that that's one of the most common side effects of that shot? Well, I knew that some of the side effects... I knew what some, of, I mean, they explained to him what they were, but I've been on the shot for almost, you know, two years. And you suddenly so. got the bleeding? Pardon? And you suddenly got the bleeding? You've had it all over that two year no, period? No, no. Well, what would normally happen is that when I got the shot, my period would just stop for the whole three months. Mm -hmm. And this last shot that I got, it was um, for the first two months, I had, I experienced no bleeding at all. And then just the last month i mean my shot is actually due this week but for the whole past month i've been it's just been constant and it's it's uncomfortable it's you know well it's kind of unusual that in my experience that this happens late in the game like this with you usually the first three months or six months people have this so understand it is not unusual and this is minor league compared to what most people get so, but why it's happening now and whether or not you can expect it to stop is sort of the question. Well, who so, should she do? Uh, we'll talk, talk to her gynecologist. You, you may need to make a change for a while. John. Hello. Hey, you're 24. Yeah. What's going on? I get really sore, like after just even like one, like two or three sessions of sex. Um, I went just to see a three, doctor. Wow. Like the, it feels like the frenulum. Um, I'm not circumcised. And it feels like the frenulum is like just stressed and sore and painful. The frenulum for all frenulum. Of, for all of, of you who don't have a giant schematic of a penis on the ceiling an of your bedroom. Uncircumcised penis. No, or or an uncircumcised penis is that little piece of skin that sort of attaches the skin to the head of the penis, right? Sort of like what's that, under your tongue. Right. Uh, yeah. Isn't that isn't that that piece? Yeah. True. Don't give me that look. I you know, I'm right, You're brother. the doctor. The Don't is make him feel the, that the way. The piece down here where it attaches to the base or the balls. The, the oh, that piece. Yeah, it's, it's, like oh. it's a it's a piece that keeps your tongue on the floor. Of the that's what I said. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought it was the thing between the head and the shaft, that back part there, that little. It's some thing. part of the actual penis, right, anyway, and it's yeah. sore. That so let's just get sore? with the problem. So it's towards the head you get soreness. Um, no. Yeah, uh, it's it feels like, like um, oh, okay. when I have to retract the foreskin to urinate. Yeah, that it, it that hurts, like that kind of soreness. Um, right. well, and the weird thing is, when it's sore, I can last a long time. <laughs> Whereas so, when it I, when it's not sore, I uh, like most uncircumcised guys, I think I can't last very long at all. Right. 
So mm. I wonder if it's actually something on the glands. I saw a physician. He said it might be a latex allergy. It might be. It's a good thought. Oh, latex yeah. Hello. I'm very, glad he's a physician. Yeah, very common. And it's a good thing you're using a condom. Uh, however, it might be a traumatic thing, just some sort of irritation. could be a yeast. A yeast infection could cause that? Yeah, good. Has it always been this way? About, but Has it always been like this? Um, no, not uh, actually not until uh, my most recent girlfriend. <laughs> so you can try a polyurethane condom, see if that makes it go away. You can try some Cortade cream over the counter, see if that helps it. And, oh, uh, okay, cool. Thank you. And the, but try your polyurethane condom, too. Well, if it right. hasn't always been this way, then obviously something is, is altered yeah. in the uh, little science project. Yeah, but has he always used the latex condoms? I mean, can, can you develop an allergy to something, Drew? Yeah, but usually it's fairly quick to develop. Well, maybe that yeast thing he was talking yeast. about. Maybe there's a, some sort of chemical combination between the chemistry that is between him and his girlfriend. Maybe it's, it's not... It's Guys can get the yeast thing. Uh, good chemistry. Take it from me. Dan. Take it from me, please. Dan's the guy you've had on uh, hold for a while. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Dan, he's uh, 17. That's right. He, he worked the S word. He weaved that right into the top of his so question, and I put him back on hold for 25 minutes. Is this the one who thinks that his best friend and his girlfriend are doing it? Yep. Yep. So are they? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So that's I'm, a drag. I'm, yeah, I found out uh, today... Basically, she called me up about a couple hours ago. Tell me about it. Well, nice. What kind of dysfunctional, like watching too much Jerry Springer girlfriend is she? <laughs> well, I don't really know. All I know is that uh, we were pretty close, but now after I get a hold of my friend tomorrow, I might have to kill him. So she she just called you and told you that. Yeah. What was her intention? Uh, Do you know her purpose in calling me? Payback. No, she said that yeah. she was feeling down or something. And mm. he, just happened to come in the room. And Down or something, you mean sort of neglected by you? But no, she she really loves me because, my, I mean, she can't, every time I'm around her, she's always wanting to have sex and stuff, so. Well, I don't know if that's love, though. you yeah. got to watch out for that. A yeah. lot of times women want what they think they need, but, yeah. and then they feel, yeah. Well, see, I don't know if I should just, like, dump her because I know i got lots of other girls that keep calling me wanting to get hooked up, and I'm like, nah. have, you, have you cheated on her? Um, you yeah. know, but I, I've had chances where I could have. But you didn't? No. Does she know about those chances? No, <laughs> seriously, I haven't. We don't know why she told you, though. It always seems like a little payback. Did you do anything to her? Uh, no. Huh? I, I think I think it's maybe just to, to show her she was showing off or something because of my best friend. But she's one of my best friends. I don't know if I should, like kick his butt tomorrow or do men problems with him. Maybe time for a fantasy know. answer here. Oh, fantasy answer. Oh, you're right. We and were, the winner is? We we're going to work the fantasy answer. We'll work in. it. Drew, what do you think uh, Dan should do? I like, think you got to kick the ass out of the guy. I think kick you the ass go out of the guy? Maybe take a baseball bat and just beat the crap out I of him. I think guy. you take the baseball that bat. that is going to solve all his problems. You take right? the baseball bat and you do some stuff in some other orifices first. There you go. Then you knock See, his head in. I, I don't need to be here tonight either. Fabrica's just got it all. I'm with you, man. I'm just part of the answer, not part of the problem, hopefully. I'm sticking with your fantasy answer, Drew. Uh, what about the uh, ex-girlfriend? Uh, do you think uh, uh, she's fine? Got it out of her system. Oh, yeah. I oh, think um, you yes. lure no, her. Oh? You lure her into, you tell her, that really turned me on what you did with my bo my friend, you know? And actually, I'd like to see more of that. And maybe you could come do, you know, you lure her into getting gangbanged. No, no, I think that's right. I think I think she's over it, and a, a threesome will tie her in nicely with the relationship more intensely. Okay. Okay. So There's saying, a lot of intimacy there, I can uh, tell. Uh, she feels guilty enough to call you. That's love. Uh, right. And Dan's got a lot of other girls who are calling him who want sex. She's a real debutante, I'm, I'm imagining. Well, can you just picture the girls that are calling Dan wanting the sex? Girl, Dan, are you still going out with that girl who's doing everybody in town? <laughs> oh. I want you, Dan. All right, Dan. Dan, break up with this girl, please. Don't hurt anybody. Don't yeah, anybody. just, okay, just yeah. let them both go live in their personal hell together. Kevin. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah, um... Every time uh, my girlfriend gets aroused, her vaginal area gets gets sore. It, it like it gets an achy. Yeah. And I was wondering what that possibly could be. If it's just a sensitive area, or yeah. we'd have to go to talk to her. I think. Where is she? Um, In the tub. She's not here. 
Oh, okay. I don't know what you mean. What she yeah. means by achy? Yeah, was like, it? Is, like is it only with you? Is it swollen? Is it just because is, you is are too burning? big? Or is it sharp? Is it? Yeah, well, I mean, without it, without. I mean, it's a, she said it's a, like a it's like a throbbing kind of pain. Mm-hmm. Sounds like And it's only when she's aroused. It's with, if, without even intercourse or anything like that. For her whole life, it's been this way, or just a sort of a new kind of a thing. It's been somewhat recent. And how about when you have intercourse? What happens? Um, it, the pain, it, the pain goes away. Well, he doesn't care. He's getting no. laid. <laughs> 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 well, the endorphins then kick but in. After, and you just get a whole different that, it starts to hurt again. Yeah, she needs. Is she had an exam? No, that's what I was. was going to tell her to go do. No, of course. Yeah, she needs of course. an examination. Yeah, very much does to try to figure out what's going on here. Okay. And, and let me tell you, that whole area, to, you really got to know what what you're doing around there. I mean, you know what I'm saying? No. You don't go messing. What are you saying, Peanut well, Man? Here, here's what I'm. Here's what I'm saying. I was talking to a guy last night. He's a friend of mine, and he has, He's a very mechanical guy. This is that friend of mine conversation. He knows really that, about him. He knows things very well. Would you quiet down? There's nothing to do with that. And we were talking about a certain piece of technology, this new revolutionary engine. And he said, if something goes wrong with this engine, I'm bringing it right back to the place because I won't even touch it. Right. And I thought to myself, wow, you won't touch it. That's pretty good because this is a guy who touches everything and knows everything. Right. And I thought, that's right. It's too advanced. You wouldn't even know where to begin. You cannot diagnose this. You can't just check it out. You can't kick it. You can't thump it. You got to take it to the vagina doctor. <laughs> That's the only guys who know about this stuff. I agree. And you got to have the experts look I'm at it. I'm putting an amen on it. Hallelujah. You got to put it up in the rack. Praise God. Praise Penis. Him. Anyone could look at. Yeah, I mean that's like it's exterior equipment. Yeah. It's it, this whole other. It's high tech. Smack you could table. go to a drunk veterinarian with a pe bad penis. He could fix you up. It's just like a you know it's like any other animal. But the vagina. Whole different deal. Whole different ball of. I was gonna say wax. <laughs> Bad. What do we got here? How old is the person? Pam is 16. Pam? Yeah? What's happening? Uh, not much. Uh-oh. What's up with you? <laughs> mm, nothing. Well, then why'd you call? Um, well, I do have a question for Adam, really. Okay. Um, I think it was Wednesday night. I was listening to the show, and a guy from Washington called. And he was talking about the morning after pill. Oh, that's right, yeah. Which I agree with it, except people shouldn't be getting in a situation where they need it. Right. Yeah. But I kind of got a little bit upset about something that you said, Adam. You said, basically said that only rich people or people with a lot of money should have kids. Well, only people that can pay for their kids should have kids. Okay, because the way I took it was you were saying it was rich people. Well, I wouldn't mind that either, don't get me wrong. But I realize uh, the middle class has to have kids too. So, anyone who can afford kids can have kids. Okay, because I was going to say... No, oh, I made that abundantly clear. Okay. Why? I mean, What's your... What, 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 what kind of shape, by the way, do you think we'd be in if uh, only rich people had kids? Not very good. Well, there wouldn't be many of us. Fine. More freeway for me. <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day when I was driving. You know, I was thinking... You know, everyone everyone freaks out. Like, whenever you make this statement, hey, I think only rich people should have kids. <laughs> You're like some new Hitler. But think about it for a second. First off, in a few years, everyone would just be rich. Because right. only, only rich people would have kids. They'd all be educated. And everyone would be educated. And really, how bad a, a deal would it be? I mean, and, and what do you, who are you worried for? The kids? I think the kids might be all right. It's that personal projection issue, you know. It's like if people go, "Hey, don't say that. You're talking about me." Uh, right, right. Listen, I'd I'd be perfectly fine. Well, let's put it this way: if only one group, if one class could have kids, what? rich or poor, what do you want to go with? Rich. Put it that way. Yeah. Idiots. Please. Sure. I want rich people to have kids. I wish a rich person had me, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I wish you were rich enough to have kids. Uh, and I don't <laughs> mind middle class people having kids either, but I do not want poor people having kids. You know why poor people shouldn't have kids? Because poor people have to sweat every other detail in life. Poor people, when the radiator blows in their car, that is a catastrophe. That is a 10. 
You understand? And because they take it out on their kids. It's 233 bucks, and that's what you make in a week. And all your money that week is going to the radiator in your El Camino. And none is going to the kiddies. And none is going to education. And forget about piano lessons. And don't even begin to think about Lego land. And That's beyond that, let's talk about kids. the frustration that they need to start taking out on their kids. And, and listen, you know what you poor people need to do? You need to focus every ounce of energy on not being poor. And this is how you stay poor. You have a whole bunch of kids. Exactly. You, you need to. Feeding. Here's what you need to do when you're poor. And if everyone has a problem with this, they can send a letter to Drew. When you're poor, here's, here's the plan. Listen to me, everybody. I'm only going to take 30 seconds here. You work your job during the day. And then at night, you get some sort of schooling or you do some sort of training or you make some effort to better yourself so you don't have to go to your crappy job the next morning. Eventually, you'll go to a better job because of the education or the training that you've accumulated in the evening. When you have four kids, you cannot go off to college when you get home from, from work. You have to go to another job, which is crappy. And you end up having three jobs that all pay six fifty an hour instead of one job that pays 75 bucks an hour, which would allow you plenty of times to raise your kids in a healthy environment. Thank you very much. Hey, Loveline, Vivica Davis is uh, here. Just started rapping. I was a rapper. That's how I survived. Ed TV, can you uh, bust a rhyme? I can. Would you like me to do that now? Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's see. It's been so many years since I did this. Yeah, hold on. Like 14 years old. Well, well, Read the music. Right. Let's see. The whole was supposed to hear it. It better be loud. Speak up like you were taught to when you were little. And you were the one who was stuck in the middle. Do you think for a minute that the slaves would be free if they hadn't made it obvious they wanted to be? Speak up. Finish the puzzle with a piece of your mind. Whatever. Uh, wow. Whatever, whatever. That was good. <laughs> You know what happens. This is, a, this is a blonde chick here. This is a, bl a white girl. Darling, and then I started rapping on the corners, and it was a good thing, and I survived. Really? What was the end of that? Uh, you, you speak up? Speak up. Finish the puzzle with a piece of your mind. Be like the horse that wins a race when he comes from behind. Freedom to express is what makes me unique, because I got the freedom and the power to speak. Wow. Now, I'm going to do uh, Drew's rap. <laughs> I had a little dreidel. <laughs> I made it out of clay. And when dreidel. it's dry and ready, oh, dreidel, I will play. Oh, oh, dreidel, 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 dreidel. I made it out of clay. Liz. Yeah. Liz, baby, what's up? You're 28. Yeah, I wanted to know, um, I wanted to advise that girl that was on the depot. You didn't, you didn't mention, you just said, oh, maybe it's time for a change. That If she gets back on it, she's going to have she, that same introductory three-month she didn't have it at all until she'd been on it for many, many, many months. And right. then all right. of a sudden, I've been on one. It for four years, and I wanted to say she should stick it out because it's the best thing when you have no mm. period. What is it? Oh, yeah, imagine, a... imagine having no period for years. Oh, well, that I sounds intriguing, but I don't think it's healthy. What is it? No, it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a progestational control? agent. Yeah, it's a birth control shot. Okay. You take it last uh, three see, months. I don't, I don't. I, don't. I still think you misunderstood what she said. That she had a period for a month. She never had the initial bleeding. Okay. She never, never had, had a problem. It. So when she restarts... She, she will have a three-month... Not, necess well, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. And that, indeed, she may need just to stick it out, and that's not a bad way, but she has to review that with the physician that's prescribing it. Uh, so if, it, if it bothers her that much that just one month of bleeding is so overwhelming, she might be it, it may well go on. It, the next shot may be a big deal for her because it could easily go on another three months. You're uh, well, a doctor? I don't know what name that is. Twana? Twana, baby. Yo, 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 what's up? Hi, Vivica. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, Adam. Wow, she was right about that. Twana. Yeah, I wanted to say just before I start that Dr. Drew and Adam, I swear honestly on everything I believe that if you'd been there for me when I was a teen you would have saved me years of acting out and wow. I would have actually listened to you. Wow. Well, all right. There's I a, there's know a, I would have. Thank you. I Testament. needed that and I didn't have it. Oh. Well see as a public service you guys are doing we good. Hope. How are you right. doing now Twana? Pretty bad. <laughs> What's that? Well um, I'm multiple mm. um, or dissociative identity disorder according to the DSM-4 yeah. and which I'm not happy with and I've had it's been really bad the last few months. I've always been high functioning and doing really well, and then yeah. things really fell apart in December, yeah. and I had to get back into therapy, and things have been out of control, and I've been very suicidal, and I'm con committed to kind of killing myself, and so my you, caregivers the, the, have been... The, 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 the 
one character, of the yeah, other. your alter that we're talking to now is committed to it, or one of the other ones is? A lot of the primary system is. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the primary system is. So you're sort of f battling that tendency. Well, what happened is I've asked for help in a major way. So my primary care caregivers are reaching for straws, mm -hmm. and they've thrown me on a medication that is for schizophrenics, and that's an antipsychotic. Which one? Um, Zyprexa. Zyprexa is a, is a new class of antipsychotic. Right. It's, it's very mild. It's not just for schizophrenia. Well, I took it for the first time yesterday yeah. and passed out at work. Oh, too drowsy. And yeah, I well, was what, literally... Hold on. Can you give me some of that, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> they put me under my desk yeah. at work for three hours. Yeah. Then I slept for another three hours when I got home. And then I slept for 12 hours at night and was late to work this morning. He, here's one and of the, how am I going to live for anything no. if I You're can't? No, no. That, that, of course they don't expect they have that kind of side effect. You need to talk to the doctor to prescribe and let them know. The, the dose seems to be too high, but but I don't the, want them to see me as resistant. Well, no, listen, I no, no, Antoine, they will not see as resistant for having passed out for five hours from the medication. They will hopefully adjust the dose. Uh, what they're basically trying to do is the, the way you might conceptualize it is the antipsychotic medication is a type of a perhaps you think of it as a glue, sort of glue the the uh, character, keep them intact, keep things sort of glued it together. What about me? That that's what they're putting me on. I mean, how is that supposed to make it's, me feel? It's an anti and It's an antipsychotic. You know? Yeah, but it, it's not a very potent antipsychotic. The real powerful stuff like Haldol and Thorazine, that's not what they're putting on. They're putting on a very mild new class that's often used in depression and, and is, is sort of thought of as a glue for the, for people who have dissociative kinds of phenomena. Tawana, what happened to you that you now have this uh, fractioning of the... Uh I'm not a legal abuse survivor, but everything else you can think of. Mm. The first time I saw someone murdered, I was 10. Mm. Some of it was wrong place at wrong time. Some of it was family. Mm. Some of it was out of a family. But I've always been intelligent, and that's what's kept me stable. I've yeah. got higher degrees. I've always worked. I've always been able to function, and I always knew something was wrong. Yeah. And I always tried to fix it. And I'm tired of 20 years of therapy, yeah. and I'm tired of spending all of my discretionary income on mental health. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the show's free. <laughs> That's the good news. You got but, that. You know, but when I was a teen, you guys weren't around, and so I had some crazy uh, years. Blame Drew for that. I, I contacted him when I was uh, about uh, 12 <laughs> and said, uh, we got to help the kids. Years. Huh? I thought he was the one doing the show for 13 years, oh, yeah. and he just jumped on. That's right. Actually, Drew, how many years have you been doing this show? Like 17. Oh, Drew. Is that nuts? Yeah. What a loser. My God. <laughs> and you know what? And it wasn't going anywhere but the toilet until I blew into town. Now he's got all kinds of opportunity. I and guess does he thank me? And I feel desperate. I, I worship. I built a temple in your honor. What are you talking about? She's yeah. talking about feeling desperate. Oh. You guys are doing your evil. All right, Drew, what should okay. Twana I like do? Your stick, so. Thanks. You're, you listen, <laughs> I, I Twana, think... you're very intelligent, and uh, that is going to see you through a lot of things, but you still have to work out the medication yeah, yeah, and when, that it, kind when, of when stuff. When it comes to depression, and obviously the depression is a very complicated setting in your case, even in a, in a pure setting where depression is the only issue, pharmacologic agents are clearly the cornerstone or a cornerstone of treatment without which y your life could be in danger. So it's important to take advantage of that and work with the doctors and see if they can find something that does work for you. Sheila. Hello. You're 13. Yeah. Um, I have a friend that I've known for basically all my life. And after a while, after since I've known him, he's gotten this complete fantasy of us being in this relationship that will... What Never makes her sound? Ended. She sounds 13. What do you think makes her sound? Huh? Like? Yeah. Go ahead, Sheila. Um, and, after, and he's, you know, asked me to be his girlfriend. And the thing is, I'm only 13. He's 12. And I really don't want to commit to anything. Have you told him that? Oh, God. What? Have you told him that? Yes, I've told him that. And he's still just... He's very dedicated. Clingy. Yes. Clingy. Yeah. He's desperate. It's horrible. Yeah, it's going to be tough, Sheila. Don't be mean to him. Yeah, but be firm. But be firm. Because yeah, because if you keep letting him get away with his fantasy, then his fantasy is prolonged, yep, and gross. it's hard. Yeah, it, it, is, it is cruel. It is like pulling a tooth. There's pain, but if you did it a centimeter at a time, it would be cruel. You must yank. It's true. It's like eyebrows. That's You'll find right. out about that later. Shall I we? had mine wax today, by the way. No way. I absolutely you did. You didn't want to be the one brow guy What's anymore. What's the matter with you? I've lost all. all I was doing. For you. I was doing a, a job. It turned into a bit. Look I, at all the explanations. I had a, a 
uh, woman who uh, was from, like, uh, Paraguay leaning over me with hot wax. Oh, my God. And I look ten years younger, don't I, Ann? Thank you. Hey, it's the love line. Hey. Okay. No, we, we, agree, we agree with you. Vivica Davis, uh, thank you very much. Ed I, TV. I have multiple personalities. Do you? I just get paid to do them. I can do all sorts of people. Who you want? Hi, my name's Jenny, and I have a problem with men who are... Who are Prettier than I am. I like to go out with men who are prettier than me, and then it does a weird thing to my self-esteem. I wish we uh, had started looking at uh, Vivica's reel before the end of the show, because uh, <laughs> we've been over for a minute and a half now. I want to thank uh, the beautiful uh, Sherry for doing a wonderful job on the phones and always wearing a new and delightful outfit. The angular one, producer Ann, whose yeah. uh, hair gets uh, blonder, whose eyes get bluer, and whose ass gets smaller. <laughs> Every single week, and of course, uh, Engineer Brett, who did a wonderful Woo! job filling in for Engineer Mike and got the drop that I consider to be golden, which needs to be labeled especially for Engineer Mike. Okay, Engineer Brett? So thank you very much. Time. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll. Thank you, by Thanks the way, Thanks for having me. Same for Dr. Drew. Mahalo. Mommy! <laughs> this has been Loveline. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. You don't have pain. Things seem to be going along okay. Just keep checking in with your uh, obstetrician about it. Drew's wife uh, had his kid C-section, so he was actually getting her during during the birth. N no. Oh, yeah. No, because she had triplets in all preterm labor for like three months. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Well, so it was like a, those are big hooker months for you? <laughs> Drew's, uh, Drew's got a lot of stress, and it's important that he blow it off every once in a while. Beg your pardon? Yeah. All right, Melanie. Okay, you know what? Thanks for the insight. Really quick, Adam. Yeah. Um, a while ago, because I live in Chicago, so it's kind of, we get it on delay, so I don't know exactly when the show takes place, but you had said something about you wanted to come out with prescription bottles with adult caps that you can take on and off. Yes. And what we have in Chicago at the pharmacies is once you get the childproof cap off, mm -hmm. you flip it upside down. And it just screws on and off. Genius. No, they all, all pharmacies have that. They do? Yeah. How come I don't have that? You haven't tried flipping it over, probably. Well, you, you're, not ta you're talking about this, the over-the-counter stuff. She's talking about prescription bottles. I, all, all I'm saying is is I, whether everything is child-proof now. Yeah. Lighters are child-proof. Drew, you, you know these lighters. Yeah. You flick it, you get one shot. Anyone who's ever lit, in, lit one of these lighters, these disposable lighters, knows that they don't work from flint and butane. They just work off a of friction. Uh. If you rub the, th you, you got to rub the thing for like 20 minutes to get the thing to light. Uh. I mean, just flip, 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 right? right? Now, with the childproof ones, you flip it once and you have to reset it. Uh. So, to light a cigarette takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes. To light a cigar, you have to quit your job. <laughs> You just you have to you, you just can't do it. It's so like right. flip, reset, right. flip, reset. Right. And I think to myself, I don't have kids. And how many kids can figure out the flip part but not the reset part? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you give a lighter, it takes some physical dexterity, some hand eye coordination, just do the flip and hold on one of these disposable lighters. The part about uh, resetting it, that ain't much to figure out if you can get the flip and hold part. I don't like that. I don't want. I want a whole store of crap that is not childproof. I'm tired of wrestling with bottles. I'm tired of wrestling with lighters. I'm tired of riding in the back of goddamn cars where the window won't go down because some idiot jumped out of it 20 years ago. I'm tired of it. I want an adult world. You look after your own kids. That's not my job. Why do I got to suffer because everyone's a bad parent? Drew, seriously, how many times have we ridden in the back of the car? Remember when you're sick and we're driving the back of that oh, that car? The window wouldn't come down. Poor Drew had to shove his wedge his face out the back of the thing. To vomit. Everything is kid proof in this world. I'm tired I, of it. I like that. I don't. All right, you're, you're lucky we're late for break. I maybe come back with this. Love line. Be right back. <laughs> All right, we got to take a little 10-second timeout that, uh, because of uh, last hour's rant, I'm running a little bit late for. So we'll take a quick 10 seconds, and we'll be back with more Love Line in a second. This is Love Line on Radio Station. This is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. 
That be Dr. Drew. Did you clean your shirt up, Drew? No, it's a nice big stain right here, see? <laughs> here. <laughs> How do you get coffee out of a yeah, light blue shirt? Know. I don't know. You're screwed. That's it. You know what my technique is? Mm. Wash it and lock it in. That's what I do. I throw it right in the dryer and really lock that stain mm, in. Nice. I screw up every shirt I, I wash. It's a mess. You know what, I, you know what my technique for uh, nice shirts is now? Yeah. I take them to the uh, dry cleaner, extra starch. You can wear the shirt like 15 times. It oh, still yeah. looks good. Yeah, yeah. And then you just pile on the deodorant. You dump a bunch of talc down your pants. You go with extra starch. You wear the hell out of the shirt. You can also just buy a polyester mix. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. What's that? What's that one called? Polyester. Rayon. Polyester. <laughs> That's multiple esters. Yeah. More than one ester. Is that what that means? Mm -hmm. Steph. Yes. You're 22. Yeah. What's going on? How do you let a how do how, how do you let a guy know you're interested? Oh, uh, geez. Um, you talk about uh, how bad dating is at your campus. Really. Uh, yeah, and then that sort of, um, uh, I guess, I, 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 I don't know. Okay. Well. I went to the girls' school, so how do I know? All right. I, I didn't, uh, it's like I, 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 it's like I took some trig equation yeah. and leveled it on every, uh, it's a bunch of 20 year old chicks. I'm just asking how you let a guy know when you're interested. Like, oh, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, you guys are pathetic. What girls' school did you go to? Uh, I won't take.